well, you know, I've been fortunate to uh, work with Chris for uh, a number of years on, uh, on a few movies, so uh, it's a very easy decision to go to him because uh, he's, you know, one of the best of all time, really. And uh, the fact that he was interested in this material and uh, we found a way to work together was a blessing. You know, Chris is one of the great uh, big screen directors and uh, anything that he makes is probably best seen on the big screen. Well, that was the other thing, you know, uh, Chris is uh, such a complete director, writer-director, filmmaker, that um, when there's an opportunity, no matter the size of the role, the best actors in the world want to work with him. And, you know, as a producer, it's, uh, it's a blessing to be able to tag along to that. Well, I think the movie is incredibly compelling and, uh, you know, it deals with a, a character who's one of the most uh, meaningful characters, certainly in the 20th century, uh, if not in history. And uh, it's also one of the most um, important times and inventions that has changed the world for us, you know. And um, it's something that needs to be seen and enjoyed, but also thought about. I know of no story as dramatic as that of Robert Oppenheimer and his involvement in the creation of the atomic bomb. He's a person who literally changed the world we live in. Well, I've known Killian for 20 years. We've done, what, six movies with him? Uh, but never as the lead. But he has this extraordinary combination of empathy uh, and sheer talent that allows him to open the, the hearts, uh, the emotions of his character, the thoughts of his character. He lets us in, so he carries the audience with him on that journey. The thing that really, I think, persuaded these incredible talents to work on this movie was the script. Chris wrote an absolutely brilliant script, and um, I think that that was, the, uh, you know, I think, that, I think they all were fairly keen to work with him, but the script was the, the clincher. Chris has said that he's the most important man that ever lived. It was a huge role, huge responsibility. You know, my favorite director, um, some of the best actors in the world. It was, I, you know, I had to say yes. We have a good understanding. I think we, we trust each other at this stage. We know each other very well. It just works, you know? That's what re-collaboration does. All my experience with Chris has always been real sets. Um, so you experience it as the, as the characters would. It's a more visceral and uh, honest response I think you get. I was completely uh, overwhelmed, you know. It's extraordinary. That's how it was designed. That's what it was made for. And it's, it's less like a movie and more like an experience. She was such an exhilarating character to even just read about. She was so exciting for that time, a sort of non-conformist and a bit wild, you know. And um, forthright and not terribly warm. And <laughs> it was just fun to play her, it really was. I mean, I think it, there's a lot of trust, and I think when you've worked with someone and you've gone through an experience with them where you have these really accelerated friendships, that does carry on over to the next project. And I think we needed it because we, we, we were playing this sort of tumultuous marriage, and it's so effortless with him. It's just amazing. He's just a magnificent director, and, and such amazing vision, so singular, so so incomparable you know what he's done for cinema and the way in which he does it and he makes these films for audiences he loves his audiences he, he makes them to be a fully immersive experience for you like a life-changing one and I think people feel that about his films that's why they watch them so many times I mean I think get ready to feel like your bones are gonna shatter <laughs> it's like it, it's it's not what you think it is Trojan horse does it's it's really a horror thriller it's 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 incredible my biggest way in was just researching her and of course there isn't much however there are pictures that were taken of her during that time by Robert and to me someone like him for his head to be turned has to be by someone who is truly magnetic and magical and and uh, uh, pretty intelligent so I understood uh, the, the message <laughs> just by the short research that I did. And also coming to a set that was already alive before I got there, it wasn't very hard for me to figure out like what I needed to do. Um, and also just, you know, try and do right by the character and the real person. I've been waiting to meet Killian for years. And um, the fact that I was able to work so closely with him on this was 
an utter dream, like totally. It was completely pure and completely real and exactly what acting should be like. You know what, no one could have prepped me for that, for that experience. He truly, truly is the, the greatest and I think every actor under the sun would be desperate to get on their own flight to come and be in his movie. So the fact that he wanted that from us is truly amazing and I'll, I'll be thinking about that experience with him for a long, long time. Movies are designed to be seen large, to be signed, to be listened to large. Obviously, we've had our, our own habits in the last few years of watching things on smaller screens, but this movie was designed by one of the greats to be seen on a big scope, and you need to honor that. You need to honor the way that arts are being made. So, Ernest Lawrence is one of the most kind of fascinating 20th century, century characters I knew nothing about. So, when I got the role, I just went and read as many books as I could on him to kind of find out everything I could. The fact that he started the Rad Lab, the fact that he was the first person to kind of be in charge of this project, uh, the fact that he was the first American physicist to win a Nobel Prize in his 30s. Uh, I mean, he was just a remarkable human being. In these uh, books, these biographies, they said that he was sort of a mixture between Barnum and Bailey and like your typical physicist. Like he was very good at communicating with people in a way that most physicists aren't. You know, they're sort of recalcitrant, dark, moody, kind of like Oppenheimer, but he was a much more Boolean character who was able to kind of bring people in. And I wanted to kind of give that vibe to him. And so I gained a bunch of weight. Killian had the hard job losing a bunch of weight. I just got to eat whatever I wanted. We went out to dinner one time and he was so angry with me. So I was just like, I'll have a dessert, I'll have a second dessert, you know, and he was just, yeah, poor guy starving himself. It's a dream I think most actors have to work with Chris and I've I've known him for a long time. I missed an opportunity to work with him early on in my career and to be able to be called back up essentially like to, to work with him was a fantastic thing and like a dream come true. So I was just before I even before I even read the script honestly I was like yes I will do this. Yes. So it was kind of a family atmosphere because we were in the middle of New Mexico, as you say, in this place. We were shooting on this place called Ghost Ranch, which is just outside of Abiquiu, which is uh, where uh, Georgia O'Keeffe has her museum and where she lived. So it's absolute middle of nowhere. And we were all staying in these little cabins right next to each other, all lined up. And so we'd go out to dinner every night and we'd talk about the day's work or just kind of BS. And it was just, it felt like an old school type of film that you wouldn't really see these days. It felt like making something like the Misfits or something back in the early 60s. Or the film felt, felt almost like we were in the 40s, so it was so easy to get into character the next day. You know, it was really, really cool. Most memorable moment. Honestly, all of them were memorable because all of the actors are so kind and so easygoing. And I have, like, I've worked with a lot of really interesting actors over the years and a lot of big egos. And on this set, it just seemed like everybody's egos melted away. I don't know if they had them to begin with, because nobody brought that. And it was, so, it was so pleasant to be on a set where everyone was there to do the same job. Everybody recognized that it took us all to get it done, and there was no, uh, there was no grandstanding. It was, it was incredible. Yeah, very, very cool. Very unlike Hollywood. Uh, well, it's a real person. I play Neil Spohr, who was one of the fathers of sort of quantum physics, uh, debated with uh, Einstein, some really significant figure in 20th century physics. So there's lots to read about. He, uh, he's Danish, and he had lots of he had lots of interest in sports. He had an interesting life. He had six children. It was somebody whose science and whose life were very rich. So I was encouraged to go read it, and uh, and also um, to call on my own experiences of visiting Los Alamos, where the, his involvement in the story takes place. Uh, his work ethic is extraordinary. Uh, his capacity for fun and inventiveness. He can handle massive scale, but he can give the actors time and care and consideration in the middle of it all in a way that is very, very pleasing and unusual. He's complex, he's sexy. Uh, he's, you imagine him as being a man who could persuade people to do all sorts of things, including fund this extraordinary city in the desert that would produce a world-changing substance. Um, and so Killian can think with um, a capacity to compel the audience. He has energy, he has vitality. Uh, it's a sublime performance from him. You will feel things in the film that are as a result of Chris Nolan and his commitment to IMAX presenting an entertainment that is so compulsive and so complete, so visceral. It's not just ideas, it's the soul, it's the heart about something that affects all of us and could have changed 
to the history of this planet, its consequences continue to, to influence that. So it couldn't be more important story uh, more with a more important and appropriate filmmaker. Where we started on this was uh, Chris had an idea to uh, use the violin as Oppenheimer's sound and portrayal his story. That was kind of like the only note that Chris gave me in the beginning. And, uh, you know, it was a very different experience for me to work on this movie because I've never done anything where the music is just telling one person's point of view. You know, the, the, mu the music is coming from Oppenheimer's point of view. You're like, yeah, you're, you're, the audience is with him all the time. You know, you're, you're not judging him, you're feeling what he's feeling. So that's what the first person of the music is in this one. Early on, one of the first things that I saw in the movie was that Chris's early experiments with the visual effects, you know, how they made some of the incredible, like, splitting of the atoms, deep atoms, and how they made that move, and how it looked. Like, I remember being in the IMAX theater and seeing those early experiments, and I was like, I was so taken back by how amazing it looked. And that's when I was in the theater, I was like, that's how I want the music to sound like. And that was the challenge, to make the music sound as cool and interesting like those images. The way that we start working is three months before we start shooting. And that's when we're in pre-production and we have meetings every week and we start sitting down. I write about 10 minutes of music every week. We listen to it and the way we kind of build the world together and then he goes around shooting the movie and he has my music in his headphones and listen to it. And so when he already had the first cut, there's already a bunch of my music in there. And, um, you know, it's, it's input. It's, it's just a very incredible, like, creative collaboration that is always a back and forth, you know. It's such a unique story, you know. Um, and seeing this type of intimate but also huge story on a screen like this like there was some footage of, that I saw early from, from from when they shot the movie that I never experienced in the theater and you're sitting there and you have that big screen and you see like in, like a close-up of Kelly Murphy's face and I've, I've never had that impression before so I was like you want to see this you want to feel all the new feelings you haven't had before and, and you have to see it at the biggest screen as possible what Chris gave, I think, all of us was this, an, an amazing script and an amazing direction. Like, he just, his notes are so precise and incisive and just spot on, and he just really makes everything better. So it's just a thrill to be in a movie with him, and, and, and I'm really glad Universal's putting it out. I've had a lot of success in my career with Universal. I love everybody over there, and I'm glad they're still putting big, serious movies in the theater. It's very cool. Yeah, I don't know if there's any director who does the kind of grand scope and scale along with like the great human drama the way Chris does. Like all of his movies work on, on really every level and it's so hard to do that. I mean, the people who've been able to do that historically, like you know it's like Jim Cameron, Steven Spielberg, like you know it's like you, you can list them on one hand and, and Chris is just at the height of his abilities right now. So it was very cool to get the call. Look, I think what he did in this movie is one of the great screen performances that I've ever seen and I'm, I'm really I'm really happy to I'm happy for him I saw how hard he worked um, I saw how he and Chris really together built that role it was like they were so in lockstep together and kind of creatively aligned and it showed that this was I think their seventh movie together because they really they really did some beautiful work together well, it's a Chris Nolan movie, so uh, you want to see it on the biggest screen possible. I mean, that's how he shoots it. He shoots it with that in mind. You know, in this one, he invented black and white IMAX film for this, for, for, like for some of the sequences in this. It's like something you've never seen anywhere before. He's just, you got to see it on the biggest screen you can. Well, I mean, you're hearing what people are saying about the film. It literally is a cinematic experience. They're using the M word masterpiece. That doesn't matter. I want to be entertained. I want to be thrilled. I want to be transported. And obviously, I mean, Chris Nolan and IMAX are kind of synonymous at this point. So do yourself a favor. Check it out big. Big format.